Pressurization Manual Control, Boeing 737. Before start talking about the pressurization manual mode, let's just have a quick overview over how the automatic mode works. Making it simple, in every single flight, it is programmed to pressurize the cabin to the altitude of the landing airport. If the destination airport elevation is 5000 feet, after takeoff the auto system will take the cabin to this altitude. If the destination airport is at sea level, the auto system will take the cabin altitude to zero. Why it does not happen in most of the flights? Because to provide protection to the aircraft cell, the automatic pressurization system will always respect a differential pressure limit. The system will try to pressurize the cabin to the landing altitude, but, if the limit is reached first, then the system will maintain this limit. In this first example, the flight altitude is set to flight level 260 and the land altitude to 5000 feet. Let's observe the cabin altitude and also follow the differential pressure indication. For dynamic purpose, the video will be occasionally accelerated during the course of this presentation. Now the aircraft is flying at flight level 260 with the cabin altitude level at 5000 feet. The differential pressure is indicating 7 psi. It is below the limit of 7.45 programmed for this altitude, and that is the reason the cabin altitude can be maintained at the landing altitude of 5000 feet. Now let's climb to flight level 300 and see what is going to happen. Observe the differential pressure indicator. That is the only one changing during this short climb. At flight level 300 the pressurization system is still able to keep the cabin at the landing altitude of 5000 feet, but just because now the differential pressure limit increased to 7.8. Let's keep climbing, this time to flight level 340. As at flight level 340 the differential pressure limit is the same 7.8 psi, the cabin will have to climb to not exceed this limit. This time, when the aircraft stabilizes at flight level 340, the pressurization system will not be able to keep the cabin altitude at 5000 feet anymore. That is because, as mentioned earlier, the automatic mode will never exceed the pressurization limit assigned for the altitude set as flight altitude. That is the reason why, despite the fact that the landing altitude is set to 5000, the cabin altitude now is at approximately 6500 feet. Let's climb now to flight level 400, where the differential pressure limit is 8.35 and see what will be the cabin altitude when we level off. At flight level 400, and with the differential pressure of 8.35, the cabin altitude stabilizes at approximately 7,500 feet. Finally, let's climb to the highest flight level we can fly. Let's check what is going to be the cabin altitude at flight level 410. As the aircraft reaches its maximum operation ceiling, the cabin altitude also reaches its maximum altitude for a normal operation, 8,000 feet. Once again, what is controlling the cabin altitude is not the land altitude of 5000 feet, but the differential pressure of 8.35. Despite the altitude you set as land altitude, the cabin altitude will be maintained at 8000 feet during the cruise. If the land altitude is changed, it will be only considered during the descent to calculate the cabin rate. If you are flying to a high elevation airport and following the applicable supplementary procedure for the pressurization, the automatic mode will only command a cabin altitude of 6000 feet if the differential pressure limit is not exceeded. Otherwise, like in this example, a higher altitude will be maintained. In case of emergency, if it is necessary to remove the smoke from the aircraft, the non-normal checklist may direct you to set the land altitude to 10,000 feet. In this case, 
as it is possible to reach the land altitude without exceeding the pressurization limit, the cabin will climb to the assigned altitude. Caution! If you are executing this procedure during the descent, be sure that the off-schedule light is not illuminated. Otherwise, although you set 10,000 feet as land altitude, the automatic mode will be considering the takeoff elevation as the land elevation. In this case the cabin will descend instead of climb. This is the end of the automatic pressurization overview. Now that we finish our overview about the automatic mode, let's talk about the manual mode of operation. It can be found on the supplementary procedures and it is pretty simple and straightforward. If you want to climb the cabin, you move the outflow valve towards the open position. Use small input and set a comfortable rate of climb. To determine what altitude you will set, check the table provided at the bottom of the panel. The cabin altitudes assigned by the table already provides some margin for the aircraft to not exceed the maximum differential pressure limit. In this case, as you can see, rising the cabin altitude to 8000 feet will reduce our differential pressure. When the cabin reaches 8000 feet, use small inputs towards the close position to level off the cabin. Now the differential pressure is indicating 8.2, as discussed earlier, below the limit. Now let's suppose we are going to fly at flight level 300. According to the table, you have to adjust the cabin altitude to 6000 feet. Using small input again, move the outflow valve towards the close position and set a comfortable rate of descent. Keep an eye on the differential pressure to not let the maximum limit be exceeded. Remember, according to the aircraft limitations, the maximum differential pressure is 9.1. When the cabin reaches 6000 feet, move the outflow valve towards the open position to level off the cabin. The differential pressure now is 7.6, well within the limits. To understand in a very easy way how to control the cabin in manual mode, think about this. Connect the needles from the cabin rate and the outflow valve. If you want to climb the cabin, you want to see that needle moving clockwise. That is the same direction you will move the outflow valve indicator. Clockwise as well. You, you need to command the switch to the right, towards the open position, what is very intuitive. If you want to descend the cabin, you want to see that needle moving counterclockwise. That is the same direction you will move the outflow valve indicator, counterclockwise as well. You, you need to command the switch to the left, towards the close position, what is again, very intuitive. More information can be found on FCOM 1. Supplementary Procedures, Manual Mode Operation. Also on FCOM 2, Air Systems, Pressurization System Description.